All right, so in this video, we're looking at graphing an ellipse centered at HK. So anywhere other than the origin, uh, we're going to look at that. So recall that the equation of a circle centered at HK with a radius R was X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. So whatever H and K were became my center, right? It was centered HK. For example, if I had X minus 2 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 16. Then I knew that h was positive 2, k was negative 3, right? We always look at that. Since the minus sign is part of the problem, we have to take the opposite. So instead of negative 2, it's positive 2. Instead of positive 3, it's negative 3. So that means it's centered at 2, negative 3. So we're going to do the same type of deal with uh, an ellipse that's centered at a, some other point. So here are our new equations x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. And that's when the major axis is on the x-axis. Now notice, if it's centered at hk, all of those things that were 0 before are now either h or k. Okay? So, remember our foci before was c0. Our vertice was a0. And our and uh, minor axis was 0B. So now, look, I've got H plus C, H minus C. So we're basically starting at H and going to the left and right C, or to the left and right A, or up and down B, okay? So we're not starting at the origin, we're starting at HK. So a lot of times it really is easier to find the origin go ahead and, or not the origin, the center, and then go ahead and graph it, and then get the information you need from the graph, okay? So notice over here, we did have 0C and 0A, and I can put the plus and minuses in front of these, right, because it was positive A, negative A, plus or minus C, plus or minus A. So now we have, H is going to stay constant over here for, the, for those things at 0, and we're going to add K, okay? So that's basically all we did. We added H and we added K to all of our values. These are all the same. So notice that it just looks like we could just start by doing our center, which is HK. And then we go up and down our minor axis and right and left our A and our foci. Or, you know, backwards of that if we're talking about a tall ellipse. So let's actually see how it looks. So we've got x plus 2 squared over 16 plus y minus 3 squared over 9 equals 1. So let's start by, once again, finding a. a squared is the bigger one, so 16, which means that a equals 4. Okay? Now, b squared is the smaller one, equals 9, which means that b equals 3. Once again, we can find our center, c squared equals uh, a squared minus b squared, which means that c squared equals 16 minus 9, which equals 7. Therefore, c equals plus or minus the square root of 7. Now, when we do this, we also, this is how we would have done it before. If we didn't have the plus 2 and the minus 3, we would still have all of this information. None of that changed. The only thing that changes is now that HK, the center, is equal to negative 2 and positive 3. So we're going to go ahead and graph negative 2, 1, 2, positive 3. So there's our center. I'm going to change the color so we don't use any other points that look like our center. Now, we can think about, since this is major axis is the x-axis, we can go ahead and draw us a major axis through there, okay? And our minor axis will be that one. Now we know that A is 4, so our major axis, we go out 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left. Our minor axis is 3, 1, 2, 3 up, 1, 2, 3 down. The only thing we don't know is where are our foci. Well, we just need to go plus or minus root 7, right? Well, root 7 is what? 
more than two, but less than three. So 2.6 roughly. So from our center, we go 12.6 or 12.6. But remember, all we did was say plus or minus the square root of 7, and we changed the x value, so we're just going to subtract 2 from it. Okay? So, square root of 7 minus 2 was roughly 0.6, which is roughly where we've got that. Negative root 7 minus 2 gives us roughly 4.6, one, one, two, three, 4.6, right? So this would also, we could write this as like this. So what are our center is here, what are our foci? Our foci are at, uh, well, let's do it as about four. negative 2 plus square root of 7, and then 3. Negative 2 minus the square root of 7, 3. Notice all I did was take an h, negative 2, and add and subtract c from it. The k stays the same. And our endpoints, I'm going to take h and k, and I'm just going to add and subtract 4. So negative 2 plus 4 is 2, 3. 3. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6, 3. So let's see if that's right. 1, one 2, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, there's 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, negative 6, 3. Yeah, there it is. So we know we got those numbers right. Okay. Now, what if you're given something like this? We got 9x squared plus 5y squared plus 18x minus 30y plus 9 equals 0. This doesn't even remotely look like anything we've done so far, right? But remember when we did circles, we could complete the square. Guess what? We can do that with ellipses too. So we're going to group our x variables and our y variables together and move our constant term over to the right side of the equation. So we're talking about 9x squared plus 18x, we're going to leave a gap, plus 5y squared minus 30y, leave a gap, equals, and we're going to subtract 9 from both sides and move that 9 over here. Now, from this point, we've got, let's see, 9x squared, what was it, plus 18x plus 5y squared minus 30y equals negative 9. Is that right? Yes. All right. So we've got to factor out a 9. Do x squared plus 18x, not 18x, 2x. And then we leave a gap. Over here, we're going to factor out a positive 5. Leaves us with y squared minus 6y we leave a gap, equals negative 9. All I did was factor that leading term out so that I have x squared and y squared because remember, we can't complete the square if we have a number on the front. So we're going to complete the square here. We're going to take half of 2 and square it. So half of 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. So I'm going to add 1 there. I'm going to half negative 6, which is negative 3, square it, and I get positive 9. So this is going to leave us with x plus 1 squared plus 5 times y minus 3 squared equals negative 9. Now, since I added things over here, I have to add them to the other side. So I added a 1 here, but did I really add a 1? No, I actually added 9 times 1, or 9. And over here, did I add a 9? No. I added 5 times 9, which is 45, so I need to add a 45 to this side. 
All right, so here we've got this, negative 9 plus 9 plus 45 is just, what, 45. So 9 times x plus 1 squared plus 5 times y minus 3 squared equals 45. Okay? Now, remember to graph a parabola, I have to have it equal to 1. So I need to divide by, by 45, by 45, by 45. So now I'm going to go into 45 5 times, 5 will go into 45 9 times. This turns into 1. So we wind up with x plus 1 squared over 5 plus y minus 3 squared over 9 equals 1. So let's write it out x plus 1 squared over 5 plus y minus 3 squared over 9 equals 1. That was the equation, right? There we go back. Plus 1 over 5 minus 3 over 9. All right. So now we have this. The constant on the right is equal to 1. We can go ahead and graph it. So we know that the center is at hk, which in this k is negative 1. We always take the opposite positive 3. So negative 1, 1, 2, there's my center. All right, let's go back to red. So I know that a squared equals the bigger number, so 9. b squared equals the smaller number, which is 5. So this means that a equals 3 and b equals square root of 5. Now, I know the square root of 5 is just slightly bigger than the square root of 4, which is 2. So I know it's going to be 2 point a little bit. So put it in my calculator. Square root of 5 is 2.2. All right. So I've got my a. I got my b. I need to know that c squared equals a squared minus b squared or 9 minus 5, which is 4, which means that c squared equals 4 or C equals plus or minus 2. All right. So from our center, we can now go along the major axis, three units. The major axis is the y-axis. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Our foci, we can go up plus or minus 2. And our b is square root of 5, so we know we can go along the minor axis, 2.2. Uh, and I can see off a graph. Something like that. Now, we want to identify the center, the foci, and the vertices. So we know our center. We know our vertices are going to be negative 1 and 0 and negative 1 and 6. Okay. So we've got our center, we've got our vertices, our foci. We know we'll be at negative 1. And then we're going to take 3, which is our k, and add and subtract 2. So 3 plus 2 is 5. 3 minus 2 is 1. So negative 1, 1. Negative 1, 5. So that's all the information that we need. Now, what if we're given information and told to back engineer the actual uh, equation? Well, this is not too hard. We're given that the equation is centered at 1, 3. 1, 1, 2, 3. Has a focus at negative 2, 1, 2, 3, which means that this has to be C. 
It has a vertices or a vertex at 5, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. So that means that this has to be A. How do I know it's A and not B? Well, considering that the focus and the vertex are on the same, they have to be on the same line, and that line is the major axis, that means that X has to be the major axis, and thus that distance has to be A. So I'm given that A equals 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm given that C equals 3, right? 1, 2, 3. I know that C squared equals A squared minus B squared, or 9 equals 16 minus B squared. So I'm going to subtract 16. I get 7 equals negative 7 equals negative B squared. Divide by negative 1, I get 7 equals B squared, or B equals square root of 7. So, we're not really graphing it, but we do know that from the center we would go up square root of 7, which is uh, roughly 2 point, what? 2.6. So up 1, 2.6, down to 1, 2.6. So, we know our C, we know our A. We know that uh, X minus H, so minus 1 squared plus Y minus K squared over A squared, which I know A is 4, so A squared has to be 16. And then over here we've got B squared, well B squared is 7 equals 1. I don't have to actually graph the other C or the other uh, focus, foci, or either the endpoints. I don't have to do any of that at all. I can, but it's not required. I just need to make sure I can find A, B, and C. Whichever two I'm given, I can find the other one, and I'll be able to plug them into the equation. So if you have any questions about this one or any of the other stuff in this section, uh, just shoot me a reminder or ask a question in class.